Welcome back to my YouTube channel. We are back at it again. I am back and better than ever. If you are new here, my name is Bridget Mashonganika, aka Bella, orphan, the three months old, grew up in the orphanage, and now advocating for the orphans as well as telling my story. So if you like what I'm about, please like, share, and subscribe. That helps with the growth of this channel. Also, please leave your comments. I would really love to read your comments and also i would love to know what you think about this channel so what are we going to do today today i'm going to talk about how i left the orphanage at the age of 18 how i left the orphanage at the age of 18 so without further ado let's get into the video let's get into the video so okay yeah we're going to talk about how i left the orphanage at 18 so I left the orphanage formally when I was in grade three. That's when I left the orphanage and I was being reintegrated with my biological relatives. At that time, my grandfather was still alive. The one who gave birth to my father was still alive. So that's when I formally left the orphanage. But also things that happen and, you know, that's what I'm going to talk about now. So when I went to the village to stay with my grandfather, he died after a year, and then I had to go and stay with his cousin. And life was not as great staying with him compared to like when I was staying with my grandfather, like the one who really gives birth to my father. So, you know normally the orphanage is not supposed to like do the follow-up on the children once they leave the orphanage it's supposed to be done by the government and in my case uh the government never followed up and it was the orphanage so the orphanage would then okay fine the orphanage would send the social workers to come and check up on me and then they would then go back with the feedback to the orphanage and then they'll tell them how i was doing you know and also i'll go back and show them my report book and they'll see how i was doing at school and all that and they noticed that i was doing well and they kept helping me they were like supporting me like i had almost everything from the orphanage my school fees was being paid for um you know, clothes, food. And I remember at some time we even got like the irrigation pipes and the tank. It wasn't like those big irrigations that you know, but it was like something that would help us because they wanted us to like, you know, be self sufficient. So that's how I kept in touch with the orphanage. And then when I then wrote my grade seven, I passed my grade seven. And then because I was not really okay, staying with my grandfather's cousin, they had to move me from the village. So they are not allowed to take back a child into the orphanage. Oh, I'm not so sure. But yeah, I think in my case, since I had relatives, my relatives had to like take care of me and all that. So, you know, they planned that I would go to a boarding school and then... I would stay there, I would stay school for like three months. And then when I'm done with school, I would go back to the village. But um, I only went back from one holiday. Yeah, first holiday, um, April, yes. That's when I went back to the village. And after that, my sister had eloped at that time. She's late now, but she had eloped, eloped and then, you know, I started going to her place instead of going to the village. 
So I would go to school during the school time and I'll stay at school and then on holidays I'll just like go to the orphanage for maybe three days and then I go to my sister. And then when schools are opening, I would go back, pick my stuff, do everything, get everything that I need for school and then I go back to my sister and then I would then pick everything and take off to school from my sister's place. That's how it was like. But then, yeah, it kept happening like that, you know, until I wrote my form four. No, not form four, form six. Form six, because I turned 18 when I was writing my form six. That's when I turned 18. So, you know, at that time, a lot was happening. A lot was happening. In the orphanage, Coco Jean and Mama Stella, like the, the founders of the orphanage, were not there. It was a mess. Like, it was a mess. It was hectic. They were forced to, like, leave the orphanage for quite some time. And that's when I realized that, you know, at a place like an orphanage, if the people who really care for the children leave, then things can be something else, things can be bad. Because I remember hearing that kids were going into the surrounding communities to like ask for food, you know, things happened to that time. And Gogojin and Masla were not there. Now they are back, thankfully. They are back now and the orphanage is cool. So at that time, they were not there. And my sister he had left the boyfriend, husband, I don't know, whatever you call it, <laughs> because they were not like formally married. So that's when my sister like left the, like, the husband and she was prostituting at that time. And I really didn't know where she was. Like, to be honest, I really didn't know where she was. And I knew that it's either I go back to the village or, like, in the orphanage, seriously, at this time, there were social workers. The social workers that were there, I was not used to them. And I didn't think that they would help me get a foster home or something. So I had to talk to my history teacher for me to, you know, for him to take me in. That's what happened. So now I told my history teacher everything, my background, that I was coming from the orphanage and I really didn't tell him about the, the village seriously because I was trying by all means to avoid going back there. <laughs> so at this time, I felt like I really didn't have anywhere to go because in the orphanage, the people who really cared about me were not there. And I seriously didn't know if the social workers who were there would help me get a foster home because already I was reintegrated. I was taken back to my biological family. So whatever the orphanage was doing, following up, checking, checking in on me and all that was not, it's not really allowed because it's the government that's supposed to be doing that and it's not really allowed. So yeah, that's how I left the orphanage. Formally, I left the orphanage when I was in grade three. And then, in a way, I had to go back to, to the orphanage because, you know, the orphanage was still like active in my life. And they just had to find a way for them to like help me you know, get the education that I needed, the support that I needed because the government was not there. That is why I'm mostly advocating for the orphans because I thank God, I think I've experienced almost everything. Like I've gotten support from the orphanage, of which is not supposed to be done that way, right? But I got the support. And if the government was to do that, for every orphan that gets out of the orphanage, you know, it would help so much because I tell you, the orphanage could not even reach everyone who got out of the um, orphanage. 
if anything, probably they just reach out to the people who may, you know, maybe intelligent in school, maybe you can put it that way. They only got, they only reached those people, but maybe some of them, like some of the people I grew up with in the orphanage, I don't know, I don't even know where they are right now. Since they left, they just left, and I'm pretty sure that life has not been, like, good to them. But if they get the support, like, the support I got, life would be more bearable. Because in the village, seriously, like, in the overnight, life is better. And then now you're forced to stay in the village, and you have to adjust to the village life and all that. It's really not... Cool. And I understand why they take us back to the families. It's important that we know our families. It's important that we know where we are coming from. And it's important that we know who we are. But also, dreams are being destroyed just because, you know, there is no one to support. Because most of these people are not like, you know, they do not have a good life. Most of the people who are being forced, because sometimes they actually force you to take the child that you are not like, ready to take care of you know so some of these people don't they do not have good lives and they need the support they need the support like the support that i got because i tell you like i tell you if i look at my siblings i am deaf i am certain that if the orphanage was not around if the orphanage was not active in my life i wouldn't be where i am right now i wouldn't so I think, yes, as much as it is important for people, for kids to go back to their families, like, I think you understand the six-year system. How the person gets in the orphanage is how the person leaves the orphanage, you see. You get in the orphanage uh, using the six-year system. I talked about it. Go and watch the video. And then that's how you get out. So as long as you are in the orphanage, they keep looking for people. They keep looking for people to take you, adopt, foster. They keep looking for, for your relatives. And in my case, that's what happened. But then, yeah, this is how I left the orphanage. So I think, you know, the support is really needed. Support is really needed for the kids that leave the orphanage, for the kids who do not have parents. So in the next video, I'm going to talk about, you know, life after orphanage, life as a care lever, how it was like, and everything. So I think this is it. If you haven't subscribed yet and you know this channel for quite a while now, come on. What's happening? What's happening? Please subscribe. And also share this channel. Share. It helps the growth of the channel. So I think this is it. Thank you so much for joining me. This is Bella. Why not change your narrative? Why not change your narrative? How do we leave a legacy of hope for those whose dreams are often forgotten? How do we leave a legacy of hope for those whose dreams are often forgotten? Bye. Right, yeah. It's alright, it's alright, yeah. yeah.